Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Madzakhraf. Today we're going to talk about Antamoeba histolytica. If you're new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you. So, Antamoeba histolytica is an anaerobic parasitic amoebazone that is a protozoa. Um, if you haven't watched my video on general parasitology or introduction to parasites, I've given its link in the description box. Just go and watch that out. Amoeba has two main forms, trophozoite and cyst. Trophozoite form is motile, growing, feeding and invading. Its shape is not fixed due to constantly changing position. Its size varies from 18 to 40 micrometer. Its cytoplasm is granular and may contain some red cells and Trophozoites have slow gliding movements due to pseudopods. Its nucleus is small and central, having fine chromatin granules, and a nuclear membrane is present around the nucleus. Cyst. It is the infective form of Antamoeba histolytica. It is rounded in shape, surrounded by a highly refractile membrane, the cyst wall. Its size varies from 10 to 20 micrometer. And it is coordinate, meaning it contains four nuclei. A life cycle involves various steps. First one is ingestion. Mature cysts are swallowed along with contaminated food or water. Passed and altered through stomach as the cyst wall is resistant to gastric juice. Step number two is excitation, as the name shows that the cyst will differentiate into trophozoite. So, excitation occurs in terminal ileum or ileum uh, with alkaline pH. Probably, the digestive action of trypsin contribute in excitation, but these trophozoites tend to colonize cecum and colon. Step 3. The trophozoite phase, also called stage of invasion and division. Trophozoites grow and multiply in large gut by binary fission and are responsible for producing lesions of amoebiasis. These trophozoites invade the colonic epithelium and secrete enzymes that cause localized necrosis. Little inflammation occurs. As the lesion reaches the muscularis layer, a typical flask-shaped ulcer is formed. Progression into submucosa leads to invasion of portal circulation. Step number four is encystation. Some trophozoites come from tissues into the lumen of ball and are first transformed into pre cyst form that secretes a cyst wall and become a uninucleate cyst. Eventually, mature cysts are formed, which are infective to humans and are coordinucleate, means that the mature cysts have four nuclei inside them. This is the diagrammatic explanation of life cycle. First, the mature cyst, after ingestion on excitation, releases trophozoites. The trophozoites multiply, grow, and invade, but some of the trophozoites convert into pre cysts, which then convert into a mature cyst and this is released in feces. Sometimes the feces may contain the trophozoites. Habitat and transmission. I've talked about different types of hosts in my video on general parasitology. You can find the video in I on the right top corner of the video. The Antamoeba histolytica has definitive host, the human beings because the trophozoites reside in mucus and submucous layer of large intestine of man and the Antamoeba histolytica has no intermediate host. Transmission via fecal oral route. Incubation period. The time period between the ingestion and the appearance of first symptom. 
So this is four to five days for Entamoeba histolytica. Pathogenesis. Amoebiasis. It is a parasitic infection of intestines, the large intestine and small intestine. The symptoms include loose stool, abdominal cramping and abdominal or stomach pain. Amoebic dysentery or diarrhea signifies a condition in which infection is limited to intestinal canal and is characterized by passage of blood and mucus in the stool. Risk factors associated with severe amoebiasis. Alcohol use, cancer, malnutrition, older or younger age, pregnancy, travel history, uh, especially if a recent travel to a tropical region is present, use of corticosteroid medicine to suppress the immune system, in short, if a person is immune compromised. Epidemiology. This condition, meaning the amoebiasis, occurs worldwide but is most common in tropical areas that have crowded living conditions and poor sanitation. Africa, Mexico, parts of South America and India have major health problems due to this condition. Pathogenic lesions of amoebiasis. First one, intestinal lesions. Trophozoites enter through crypts of Leverkin and penetrate directly through columnar epithelium of mucosa by their amoeboid activity and by dissolving intestinal epithelial cells with proteolytic enzymes. Then burrow deeper and deeper by continuous slices of tissue cells till they reach submucosa. Then they rapidly multiply, destroy tissue and utilize cytolized material as their food. Spread laterally till a considerable area of submucosa is destroyed. This invasion causes coagulative necrosis and forms abscess which finally breaks down leading to broad-based ulcers. Metastatic or secondary lesions. These lesions are formed in hepatic amoebiasis. Trophozoites through portal vein and to the capillary system of liver multiply in number and result in thrombosis, leading to ischemic necrosis of liver cells and form abscess. Cerebral amoebiasis. Brain abscess usually occur as a complication of hepatic or pulmonary abscess or both. It is usually single, small, and commonly occurs in cerebral hemispheres. Pulmonary amoebiasis. It may be primary, occurring in the absence of liver abscess, or secondary, occurring as a complication of liver abscess. Splenic amoebiasis. Occur as a complication of hepatic amoebiasis. Cutaneous amoebiasis. It can occur in the site of ruptured appendicular or pericolic abscess. These lesions cause extensive necrosis, slugging of skin, and subcutaneous tissue. Clinical findings in acute intestinal amoebiasis, dysentery that may be bloody or mucus containing, low abdominal discomfort, flatulence, and tenesmus. Amoebic abscess of liver when intestinal amoebiasis is not to vote. Right upper quadrant pain, weight loss, fever, tender, enlarged liver. Intestinal lesions and chronic intestinal amoebiasis. Course and progress of lesion depend on resistance power of host. Falling points may be observed. Occasional diarrhea, weight loss and fatigue, small ulcers involving only the mucosa, extensive superficial ulcers with hyperemia, marked scarring of bowel wall, thinning, dilatation and saculation. 90% cases of chronic intestinal amoebiasis are asymptomatic, but those are carriers, means that their feces contain cysts. Extensive adhesion with neighboring rhizra. Granulomatous lesion called amoeboma is formed. Localized thickening of ball wall. Generalized thickening of ball wall. 
A localized thickening of ball wall causes narrowing of lumen, while the generalized thickening of ball wall make it palpable. Ulcers of amoebiasis, gross appearance, distribution of ulcers, these may be generalized or localized. Character of ulcers, ulcers may be discrete uh, with intervening healthy mucous membrane between them. Extension of ulcers, superficial ulcers and deep ulcers. Healing of ulcers. In superficial ulcers, mucosa is completely restored with no scar formation, while in deep ulcers, mucosal epithelium does not grow and scar tissue is formed. Histologic appearance. In early cases, ulcers limited over the muscularis mucosa. Amoeba may be seen marching along the intergranular spacing causing cytolysis. In advanced cases, trophozoites are seen migrating deeper and deeper, invading the intermuscular spaces to reach the serosa. Complications. Complications of intestinal amoebiasis are perforation, hemorrhage, appendicitis, hepatic, pulmonary, and cutaneous amoebiasis. Complication of hepatic amoebiasis. It can be pulmonary, cerebral, cutaneous amoebiasis, subterranic abscess, rupture into peritoneal cavity, rupture into stomach, rupture into inferior vena cava, rupture into pericardial cavity, rupture into transverse colon or duodenum. Diagnostic laboratory tests. First, we will collect specimens. These can be fluid and formed feces. We will do that for examining cysts and trophozoites. From liver abscess, we will take aspirate, we will collect scutum of the patient, scrapings and biopsies for trophozoic examination. We will take blood samples for serology and cell count. Microscopy. We will examine fresh bone feces for trophozoic, clumped red blood cells and scattered charcoal leaden crystals. We will also examine blood under microscope for leukocytosis. Macroscopy. Aspiration of liver abscess yields brownish yellow pus with appearance and consistency of anchovy paste. Culture. Cultures are made and lay of fluid overlying a solid nutrient based in partial anaerobiasis. Serology. It is primarily for extra intestinal amoebiasis when stool tests are often negative. Radiology. In hepatic amoebiasis, right dome of diaphragm is situated at a higher level. ONP test is insensitive. OYN parasite test. This is positive for helminths. Immunity. Specific antibodies develop in sera of patients suffering from amoebiasis. However, they do not protect the individual against reinfection. Can we prevent the disease occurrence? Avoiding fecal contamination of food and water. Good personal hygiene. Proper sanitation. Purification of municipal water supplies. Avoid using night soil human faces as a fertilizer. Eat properly cooked food. Avoid eating undercooked food. That's it. I hope guys this video has been helpful. If you liked it, give it a big big thumbs up. You can follow me on my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can also find free handouts on my website. I've given its link in the description box. See you soon in the next lesson video.